Weißer Strand, rein in den Flieger Heute seh ich dich endlich wieder Warum jetzt? Warum Here's heute? Welcome to this special sode Oktoberfest edition because it is the most wonderful time of the year. It truly is. Absolutely my favorite. I don't know if it's your favorite, but it's high up there on the octane list. <laughs> Definitely up there. I mean... <laughs> How does it get much better? You got dirndls that kind of fit. You got lady hosen. You've got you got Maritzens. You got Best Spears. You got Hellas. You got Dunkles. I mean, polka music. Everything you want. Yeah. Pre- did I say pretzels? Let's say, say pretzels, pretzels again. Pretzels again. Yeah. I love so pretzels. apparently, once uh, you have a child, or at least in my case, <laughs> my boobs were kind of like the Grinch at Christmas. And they grew three times their size. So though this did fit about five years ago, it does not and has no chance of fitting. But yeah, I'm just going to rock it because I uh, did order a dirndl because I knew this didn't fit. But our Elizabeth Hess here is going to be leaving for Scotland in under 48 hours. And we could not wait any possible longer to record this. So this is just what you get. This is it. My family is 30, 35 miles out. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. This is what you get. We're here to rock this it's gonna be special a great episode. We're going to give you all the Oktoberfest facts. Let's, uh, let's just jump right into it. I'm ready to drink some beer and talk about Oktoberfest with you. Let's do it. Um, I feel like there's so much to say and so much you could just cram into a short amount of time. So to your point, that is the goal. Uh, is it trying to cram stuff into a small space? Is that the joke you're trying to make right now? Take it off, dickhead. I'm serious. Richard, what's happening? Double D's. I take offense to that. <laughs> um, let's start off with our classic brew news. I think it, I think it's really simple as we uh, kind of uh, I don't know, like make it really easy. Like it, there's there's we're not gonna tell you like where to be at what hour or what time. Like the simple fact is Oktoberfest happens every single year. Oh. This year it's happening September twenty first to October sixth in Munich. Which is super exciting. The official. So what, yeah, the, the, official, official. the official. So if you're traveling across the pond to do that kind of party, because totally do recommend, done it a couple of times, yeah. um, please do it. But if you haven't. Yeah. And, it, and even if you can't get clear across the world, which is understandable, uh, it, it's a big party. It's recommend. a big shindig. We'll be sprinkling photos of our experiences as we've been there and, and you know, telling some tales along the way. Um, but there's going to be a lot of Oktoberfest happenings near you. Literally just Google Oktoberfest near me. And exactly. I'm sure a lot of good stuff will pop up. You can look on social medias. Everyone will be talking about it. Lots of people are there doing events. Are. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's all sorts of good opportunities. The city of Denver has been hosting a two part weekend event for the past 50 some years. Yeah. So if you thought you missed the party, it's okay. You haven't. It's going to happen again. <laughs> literally. And and throw a stone, uh, whatever, whatever you want to throw. Any Denver brewery, most of them, if, if you're on social media, obviously you must be. They're making medicines. They're making fest beers. They're having their little festival festivals. They're having poker parties, whatever. Uh, a couple notable ones, left hand. Uh, Call to Arms actually does like a whole three-week long oh. event. Which I'm really excited about because I get back before it's over. So I want to go check that out. Yeah, it'll be fun. Anyway, okay. so like she said, just Google Oktoberfest near me and you too can be part of the fun. Yeah. Oktoberfest is all about the ambiance. <laughs> Am I right? You are. <laughs> I knew it. She, she uh, from the laughter friend. and the clinking of steins to the smell of freshly break, baked pretzels and bread like poker music in the background it's a good time it's a good time to be alive yep and drinking beer yeah and you know what there's plenty of non-alcoholic options available as well so if you're not into that you're pregnant you're taking a break uh maybe you're not old enough depending on what or it you're is just choosing not to drink that's yeah, okay yeah too. you're not into it right like probably not totally watching the it. show but maybe you, uh, maybe, so maybe you are because we're hilarious and yeah. we're funny and 
That's a good time. Mm -hmm. But anyway, there's plenty of non-alcoholic options. Uh, it's very family friendly. I mean, after all, we're going to get into a little bit more. It did start because of what they would call a wedibration. And many people were invited to come and join it. And it happened year after year. So yeah. let's get more into that. Let's get into that. And in this transition, we're going to drop an Oktoberfest uh, photo and story. I'm going to tell the boob story again because I love that story. So we're going to tell a boob story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not mine, obviously. <laughs> obviously. All right. So this photo that you see here is of Liz and I. And this is a couple of years ago when this uh, dirndl did fit. Clearly pre-baby. Um and we were going out to get beers for uh, an annual celebration we do if we're not actually in Munich. It's on the other every other year. It's called Mocktoberfest with one of our great, great friends, Lenore uh, and Andy. And we were on the mission to go get beer. So we go to Hazel's, which is a wonderful liquor store. In Boulder, Colorado. In Boulder, Colorado. And you can see our attire. We have like 60 to 80 beers in our cart. And this guy comes up to us and he's like, hey. You guys going to like an Oktoberfest party or something? And Liz goes, Nope, just another Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not like. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Good times, guys. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Uh, Welcome to the main event. Uh, so, as we said, it's all about Oktoberfest. Ladyhosens are out. Dirndls are out. Tits are in fact. We've talked about some local brew news events. <laughs> so, But what we really want to get into is what makes Oktoberfest truly special. It's not just about the party, although the revelry is nearest and dearest to my heart. It might be. Anyway, it's uh, a good it's, time. it really is. It's, it's a celebration, but there's beer and there's pretzels. There's history. There's tradition. Did you catch the fact that we said it was also a wedibration? Insert fun fact here. Uh, if you didn't know, my husband and I, Kevin, actually got married in the Augustiner tent at Oktoberfest in Munich 2019. We're celebrating our five-year wedding anniversary here in a couple days. And this is an adorable picture of us uh, Getting married, standing at a table, getting yelled at. Liz has other stories of them trying to tell us we couldn't stand on the tables because you can't do that until like after six or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then no. they're like, they're like, don't do it. Oh, you can't. We'll kick you. Oh, that's really sweet. Okay, just get done quick. Just did the thing. And then we chugged a beer and like 10,000 people cheered. It was so cool. It was pretty cool. Was I pretty cried, quick. but I'm a crier. Liz, Liz <laughs> cried a lot. Here's a picture of Liz crying. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you know me at all, you're like, oh, that's just another Saturday. Okay, right. so that's a great Wedibration. Thank you. Thank you. But there is an original Wedibration story. What? We weren't the first. Which is where, right, weird, right? Mm. The Oktoberfest comes from, and it actually started way back in 1810 when King Ludwig married Princess Teresa. And they had this big, beautiful celebration, and they invited all the citizens of Munich to come and join them. There was festivities and horse races and all these beautiful things and somebody was like hey let's do this again next year and they did and hence the year after year Oktoberfest rained on kept going kept it's going a, it's a cool thing yeah so fast forward over 200 years and here we are today still celebrating uh, a festival that can be found worldwide but what's fascinating is how it evolved and while still holding on to its roots for example the beer served at Munich's official Oktoberfest uh must follow some of the strict uh, German rules for how you brew beer, right? We've got a little fun facts on it. A lot of you probably know about the purity law, which states that you can only use water, malts, hops, and yeast to brew beer. What you might not know is it's actually the oldest food law and regulation in the world. It started in 1516. According to the German Brewers Federation, you can drink a new beer style every single day for 15 years off of just four ingredients because there's that many variations of hops and yeasts and grains. Uh, you have the the six breweries that are there mm -hmm. that build up these magnificent tents. Oh, they're crazy. Well, it these six magnificent tents insert fun fact video of these tents getting built because you can actually see on the website watching them get a time lapse built. Materials to build all these tents every single year because they get built up and torn back down it takes about 800 truckloads up to 35 thousand square meters of flooring is laid 13.5 kilometers of cables will be laid 370 meters of water lines will be laid 
The smaller tents hold 100 to 700 people. The bigger tents, up to 10,000. The Stratton Hamill tent alone holds 10,000 people inside and an additional 6,000 people outside of the tent. Uh, you've got the Polliner. You've got Spatten. Augustiner. Augustiner. Hofra House. The Hacker. I don't remember the how to. It's uh, this one. Excuse me. I don't remember how to say that last word, though. It's the Hacker Pshore. Hacker Pshore. Okay. And uh, Hofra House. And the Hofra House. Is that six? Yeah. Yeah. These are the only breweries that are allowed to sell beer there. Yes. I did hear, I think I saw an article that there might be a new brewery coming up this year in the next couple of years. Oh, sneak, look at sneak, that. Sneak, sneak, sneak. would like to read that. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, they must adhere to the Ryan's Bot. So That's all it. the beers adhere to that. And it's only these six breweries, and they've been there forever at this festival. There's that. But let's not forget specifically about the official, official Oktoberfest beer, which is the Mertzen, the Martzen, the Marzen, wherever you're at geographically. It's a multi amber, delicious lager, and it's brewed in March. Lagers over a period of time, aged per Perfection, you tap it around this time of year and you're just like, that's totally slammable, crushable because it hits all those flavor profiles. Yes. It is the beer of beer to drink at Oktoberfest, but there is an emerging artist and that is the best beer. It's a little bit lighter, definitely not. Yeah. So amber, it's more golden, yeah. uh, easier to drink more of. Really, yeah. that's why they made it. They're like, here, have have some more. Yeah, um, I, I, I side toward a best beer. It's a little bit more of like a lager versus like an amber. Yeah. It's a little bit lighter. Uh, you know, I, I didn't really know about Fest beers till a couple of years ago, and it was in the States, to be honest. Uh, anytime I got sick of uh, Merton over there, uh, our good friend Troy was like, well, then just drink a Hellas. And I was like, oh, yeah, like that makes okay. a lot of sense, which the Fest beer isn't that far off. Or a Rattler. Just be a little, or a Rattler, right? You can get that. Or an N.A. Yeah. How about that? They do have NAs there. That's actually a really cool <laughs> they do. additional Dwayne. fun. Dwayne, I don't have a picture of him. Oh, actually, I might, but. Uh, but when he goes, he actually does one beer, one NA, one beer, one, because he wants to hang out and he like doesn't necessarily there to get wasted. He's there to hang out and have a long, good time. So sometimes you got to pace yourself and it's a brilliant way to do it. And nobody's going to be like, oh, you're not drinking beer because you can't tell the difference. So no, cool. and nobody really cares anyway, to be honest. It's no, really but... just like this big part about community yeah. and singing and dancing and just kind of you're celebrating, you're celebrating traditions you're celebrating fall right the harvest is all around you it's a yeah. very very beautiful thing yeah so i mean going along with the traditions as being a big aspect of the festival themselves uh the grand opening ceremony yeah which is a giant parade where i don't think they actually haul the beer anymore but the parade originally was them hauling the beer it looked like they were hauling yeah, and they might be i'm not totally sure but it basically was like all of these horse drawn carriages yeah, it's gorgeous, and they're decorated, uh, Belgians, and there's people on it, Clyde and it's sales, whatever. Yeah, it's horses. they're going through the streets, and that's like how they would deliver the beer to the festivals, of which then the mayor of the town is the first person to tap, and he will flump, oh, nail it in. Yep, and he will tap it, and at that point, and it happens right at noon. So is cool. when the drinking begins. We, we probably missed it by eight hours. Every year after the parade, the mayor comes to this tent and taps the very first keg, which signifies the beer starts flowing. Oh yeah, let's get into the tent stuff. Yeah, I want to so, elaborate a little bit more on the tents. We yeah. talked about how they're like Barnum and Bailey, this big beautiful thing. But super fun fact, they can hold like ten thousand people. Yeah, literally. That's like crazy. ten thousand people. Right? Like, and and again, like here's the link. Go check it out. You can see them all getting set up. It's really cool. And honestly, like it, it takes me back. And one of my favorite memories, the uh, when the first time we went was in 2017, and we're waiting along the edges to be uh, set at a table because you drink and sit. You can stand on table and drink, yeah. but you don't. You don't crowd the alley, right? Because they're serving beer. They got shit to do. They're serving food. Like, stay out of those gals and guys' ways. You and know, they're what holding I mean? a crap ton of them, right? You know, yeah. So many I would love to uh, break a wrist and try and <laughs> challenge somebody over there. How many signs win. I can hold? But anyway, so so we uh, so we were lucky enough to be served. What also doesn't happen that often. Correct. Yeah, you have to be at a table to get served. But they we don't got allow served. standing I don't room how. only. We got served because they brought beers to a table and either the people left or they're like, hey, we didn't order it. 
And so as we were kind of walking, trying to sneak into a table, the server like was like, hey, do you want these beers? They don't want them or whatever. And we were like, yes, 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 we so would. So we got lucky. Story of our lives. And so then we just kept circling yeah, the tent yeah. and security yeah. kept following us. Chasing They'd be like, you can't stand table. here. And we'd be like, sorry. sorry. Cool. Yeah. And then we'd go to like yeah. the next pillar and hide and run around in circles. <laughs> and it was a great time. It was wonderful. All the while, polka music, journey in the background. Like, you literally <laughs> cannot go wrong. It's so much fun. Absolutely so much fun. Um, oh, we're dapping again. Oh, then of course, like the song I we love started the songs. with. Yeah. I mean, it's such a good. It's it is just a different experience. One, like you can go during the day and you can experience the parade and the carriages, yep. and and you kid can friendly, get, uh, very family friendly, very family friendly until like five o'clock. Yeah, and then they're like, get the yeah, kids and then out. they're like, get out of here. <laughs> uh, let's highlight the food. I think that's a big aspect. I'm always going to talk about pretzels, salty, bready, delicious. It goes so good with biscuity, malty, amber, yummy, which is the Samaritan sitting next to me. But um, there's an endless supply of roasted chicken. And again, pretzels the side of your head. There's sweet caramelized almonds. Don't forget the uh, pork knuckles. Oh, Those are knuckles. also super delicious. And then, of course, the the cheese noodles or the quesa spetzel. Spetzel. I'm a spetzel. terrible German accent, especially spetzel. after this point. And spetzel. it's been about a year since I tried to spit it out. But <laughs> Spit out the spetzel. Willkommen to our <laughs> episode. <laughs> I feel like now might be a good time to insert that little video of me riding the death wheel. And if you are unfamiliar with the They death also wheel. have a death wheel <laughs> which they spin people. Well, it's on it's, it's a giant merry-go-round and but it's on a floor. So when you spin off, at least you're not like dropping into dirt or whatever. And if it is. You, you don't s- spin off as it gets of faster and faster and they put a bunch of people on this. And if you don't spin off fast enough, they, they start, start throwing ropes shit. and balls and they start <laughs> hitting you with things and it is a wild tradition. At the time, it was only five euros to go in and watch. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I watched. I did not jump on board with it. But it was really funny and a good time. And again, just bizarre things that they do. And I love it. It was great. It's so many things. So So fun. And they have roller coasters. Oh, my God. The roller coaster insert. That first place in Germany to actually get a roller coaster back in 1908. Obviously, it's not this roller coaster. It was the first one to get introduced in the country. It was at these fairgrounds. I mean, this thing loop-de-loop-de-loops. And these are not big loops. They're short and a lot of G-force loops. So if you're not prepared for that and you're a bit of a screamer like me, you're going to lose your voice. (laughs) Uh, anyway, it kind of looks like the Olympic symbols. <laughs> it does loop, look like, loop, yeah, loop. it does it looks like the Olympic symbols. Check out the video on that. It's really good. Yeah, it's a great time. Because again, like, t- like literally what we just said, like, it's not just about beer. It has these huge wide influences on literally like roller coasters getting invented. Uh, refrigeration being invented. Refrigeration getting invented. Uh, Calvin Linden worked at Spatten Brewery back in 1873, where he co-created mechanical refrigeration to help keep the beer cold. Albert, Albert Einstein worked at Oktoberfest. Working on like, electricity. At 17 years old, do you know he didn't work on a fence back in 1896? There is, it, it is not, it is literally not just beer, it is just cool fun facts history and and part of that's just because it's been around for so long but it's so wild so cool it's not just about beer it's not just about food it's about fucking awesomeness basically best time of the year yeah now that we finished up the main segment which was kind of just an interview with us because i know you guys really just wanted to talk to us the whole time and our lady hosen and jingle um but we're going to jump into the fun facts, the sips of wisdom. I know we've been trickling them throughout here. There's so many that we couldn't just like fit it in because this whole thing would just be sips of wisdom. But these are the ones is. that just didn't like trickle in. And there's just so much cool stuff. So uh, fear, feel free to uh, jump in and welcome. Enjoy your time. No. They'll come in. So where's Oktoberfest even take place? It actually takes place at this fairgrounds basically just east of downtown Munich and how we find it on a map looks like kidney bean let's get a quick rundown of how the festival has advanced in 1810 Ledwick and Therese got married 
the following year, the Bavarian Agriculture Association decided to keep it going in celebration of the harvest. In 1818, the first merry-go-round was introduced along with the first beer tents. But they're more like stands, not tents. In 1850, the Statue of Bavaria was unveiled to protect the fairgrounds. In 1885, the first rotisserie chicken was introduced, and that tradition still goes on today. In 1886, electricity was introduced, allowing lights and more rides and more festive festivities to begin. And in 1896, the beer stands were replaced with beer tents. Ta-da! Materials to build all these tents every single year, because they get built up and torn back down, takes about 800 truckloads, up to 35 thousand square meters of flooring is laid 13.5 kilometers of cables will be laid 370 meters of water lines will be laid the smaller tents hold 100 to 700 people the bigger tents up to 10,000 the Stratton Hamill tent alone holds 10,000 people inside and an additional 6,000 people outside of the tent so you might be wondering how much beer is drank every single year at Oktoberfest alone? Last year, 6.5 million liters were drank. The year my hubby and I got married in 2019, 7.3 million liters were drank. And that's just at the festival grounds. Not quite sure what 6.5 million liters of beers looks like. Well, it's about 1.7 million gallons which is about 110,000 kegs worth of beer. That is so much beer to drink in like a two-week span. It's absolutely insane. Since the start of Oktoberfest back in 1810, it has only been canceled 26 times. Times it was canceled during the Napoleon Wars, the cholera epidemic, both of the world wars, and COVID. Oh. Okay, oh my god, what a fun, again, super fun, fun facts, sips of wisdom, Oktoberfest. We are just riding the roller coaster of greatness over here. And Ooh, that's what you did. That's all I got. It is it just, I cannot express how it is just so much fun. Anyway, moving on. What a great fucking fun <laughs> fact. It was so goddamn good. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad that I'm. we're not going to Oktoberfest this year, but I am stoked to be going to Scotland. Yeah. Uh, as no surprise, uh, getting into our brews and bites, what are we going to be doing? Oktoberfest. I bet we drink beer and eat food. <laughs> so super, super duper special Oktoberfest special on the brews and bites. Uh, we went over to Pro Brewing in Denver. Um why not? Uh, it's an ultimate Oktoberfest pairing. I mean, they're there year round, especially if you're in and around the Denver area and just craving craving that German experience. Yep. We're doing a Helles Lager, the Mertzen. We've got pretzel. We've got cheese dip. We've got mustard. We, and we've got the Vienna Lager bratwurst. And it's so good. Check it out. Be. That'll be the intro. <laughs> Let's just go. We be in there. Um, okay, best part about Oktoberfest, at least for me, outside of the endless amount of signs that you get to partake in, it's definitely the food. Uh, we're at Prost in downtown Denver, Colorado, and this is their Vienna Lager brought and made with their own Vienna Lager, and it should be quite delicious, I imagine, with their merits. We're looking for salty, savory, fatty. And it's going to be malty, biscuity, caramelly. It's just going to go down the side of Absolutely delicious. Perfect to perfection. And this is why the Germans have everything figured out. Because it's sweet, it's salty, it's savory, it's fatty, it's delicious. It keeps you going for the day. You can have a few more steins. You can go ride a ride if you're at the 
successful, I recommend the roller coaster. These are okay. They are your friends. It's fine. They're like, thank God I'm not that pig. Oh, there goes. So, salty, savory, fatty bratwurst. This is the Vienna lager with the bread. Salty, bready. never skip on is the accoutrements. They always offer a nice mustard alongside it. What's this going to do? It's going to bring the total sour effect, which is totally contradicting to the sweet biscuity notes of the Merzel. Mm. But because opposites attract, it's a beautiful contradiction. Sour, sweet, prints, delicious. <laughs> Cheers! Liz got the beaner, I got the pretzel. <laughs> got her. Alright, so we've done the pretzel before, but we did it with a pilsner, the slow pork pilsner from Beerstad. This time we're going to go with the Hellas, and because I was really jealous of Liz's Marzen, I'm going to double up and get the Marzen as well. That's right. That's the way to go. Both are common beers you're going to be able to find in the tents in Munich at Oktoberfest. But I kind of like Marzen's better. Not always tis the season though, it is the season for a Marzen. Anyways, I'm gonna jump in on this pretzel. It looks beautiful. I'm gonna be a bit of a monster. I'm not like the biggest salt person. I'm gonna break off some of this house salt. How does one continue to drink without the salt? Well, it's plenty of salty for me. Uh, we're expecting to get uh, kind of similar to what Liz had with the mustard, uh, contrasting with the beers. We're gonna have that same thing once dipped with the mustard, but Readiness should go really well with the sweetness of the Hellas, and we're hoping more of kind of the biscuit flavor from the Marzen, a little bit more contrasting. It's still going to be great together. Then we're going to put in the cheese. The cheese with the Marzen, I think, is going to be the game changer, and that's honestly part of why I wanted the Marzen in here. So let's go. I'm going to go mustard first. You mustard later. Mm, great mustard. Brown mustard, a little bit sweet though. Yummy. Have a drinking problem? Yeah, the that was really good actually. Oh, um, sure. The bready and the plenty of salt still on it went really, really well with the hellas. The sweetness is really helping uh, contrast up with the saltiness. The bread on bread is going to be fa is fantastic, and then add the contrasting of that spicy mustard. Um, the sweetness really dilutes it down and keeps it amazing together. So. Well, that was yum. Um, here's what I really want the cheese in the Marzen. Let's go. It's kind of an icing. Actually, had a lot of really good uh, vegetarian food in Munich, which I felt like was unexpected. The potato uh, waffles. Mm -hmm. I didn't even find a picture. The mushroom mm, the beer, gravy. I was on fire. Sometimes the, the biscuity and the malty can get a little heavy for me. And what I was hoping and what exactly happened, the bread obviously kept it a little bit heavier, but the cheese just completely chilled it, made it nice and light and bright, total complimentary of each other. And it feels absolutely fantastic and delicious. And Liz is giving me the I love you sign. <laughs> Happy October Fest, y'all. Let's go. Woo! All right, so really there there wasn't anything like crazy to add i mean this this pairing of pretzel sausages beer like it's been going on for a really freaking long time that's so how like you survive that's yeah how like germans survive so like we didn't we we just tried to honor the traditions with it right like, yeah. like it's incredible the salty the savory the mustards like you can see when you get served the plate like where the meal has advanced over years by getting the sauerkraut at it, getting the mustards, getting the cheese, getting these things. But all of these things are just years and years of people every single year drinking Oktoberfest and pairing these things together. It is truly a classic. And and you just like there was no need for us to do anything way crazy on it because it is 
such a long running classic pairing and it is just brings back memories and just an absolute love for Oktoberfest. Shout all out to around. Prost. Shout out to Prost. Thanks. Thanks. For so her. much fun. Thanks, Prost. That was amazing and great beer and great patio and a good Wiener running to Liz. <laughs> it was a little windy. The all right. Wiener was windy? <laughs> the day was windy. Oh. I need another beer, please. So before we cheers to this top 10 list, we're going to cheers at Liz not enjoying somebody choosing her <laughs> this random dude Liz is like taking this like lighthearted picture and he's like I'm gonna join because that's what you do and that's what I you was do just and, in a bad mood that day. and Liz turns around and goes don't touch my beer <laughs> You cannot and, see that at all the, from this photo. The, the photo is so happy, and I actually think it's the photo on like all of our cover it images. Because really it's, it's in the book, isn't it's everything? It's so funny. There and was she such turned a and, and that all day. of his friends just were rolling, laughing at how it turned down, down just so much. And he was so cute. We are going to give you the top 10 Oktoberfest Marzen loggers. And this is how we came up with this list. We created the list based on gold medal winners from 2022 and 2023 of GABF, of World Beer Cup, and then we went and grabbed ratings from Beer Advocate and Untapped, and then we wrap it up with our two personal favorites, because you know what? You should get our favorites, <laughs> so take that. Because That's it's, how our, it's our list. It's our goddamn list no, and I show. I told Ma I wasn't going to cuss as That's much That's fine, anymore. because I did it. <laughs> Anyways, here's our top 10 Marzen Oktoberfest beers. You can find the... Uh, we wanted to make sure you could find like some like anywhere where you are. Yep. Some yep. like more global. Yep. Some that are more local. Cause, I mean, we love our Colorado, check so we're not going to not... Check out stores. Yeah. You're going to find more of the international. Yep. So again. check these out. If you're looking to go to the store, these are the ones that are going to just nail it so check out the list starting meow don't touch my beer <laughs> oh such a beach. Oh, that's great all right at number 10 <laughs> october fest oh my god clever name <laughs> by the mighty squirrel brewing company that's a great name. that's a great name all right. out of uh wilhelm uh, massachusetts and then there's the seed stock Mertzen from Seed Stock Brewery in Denver, Colorado. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Follow the later Hosen My by favorite, favorite name on the yeah, list. Yeah, it's a great one. Uh, Moontown Brewing Company out of Whitestown, Indiana. Capri der Hosen. Capri der Hosen. It's also pretty from good too. Quarter Celtic Brew Pub in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The Augustiner Brau Mertzen Beer and then the Augustiner Brau Kloster Mühlen from Salzburg, Austria, or Österreich, depending on your accent. Yeah, the Austria one versus the Munich brewing location. Right up there. Right there. All right, uh, and then Mechtoberfest uh, from the Ode Mecklenburg Brewery. Mecklenburg. The Ode Mecklenburg Brewery <laughs> in Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Barrel Age P3 Oktoberfest from Phase 3 Brewing Lake Zurich, Illinois. Hey, oh. And then another Oktoberfest. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, Oktoberfest yeah, name, yeah. but it's from one of our personal favorites here, Denver, Colorado. You know her. You love her. You saw her on the show. Ashley Carter of Beerstead Logger House. Congrats. Beep. And last but certainly not least, our own personal preferences. I'm gonna um, take I'm gonna take the Augustiner. I think you have to. You gotta yeah, I mean, there. I got to take the August year one like we've had. That was our very first Oktoberfest beer in Munich that we had. Yeah. 2017. It's hard not to ride that train. And then on top of it, like we did the the wedding reception and we did the celebration in the October in the the August dinner. So it's just very near and dear to my heart. So that one gets my number one. And we couldn't find it. They were sold out. So otherwise, that would be what was up here. Which is crazy. Yeah, uh, the Polliner was right up there, but yep. I had to give her the boot. A lot of good times in the Polliner tent. Will not forget. Pretty sure that's where I turned that guy down. But uh, anyway, uh, the uh, Hocker Shore is hey, well. right up there on my list. Uh, it's the original filtered fest beer. Um, it's not too far away from Emerson. They leave a little Emerson, so... It's pretty freaky deaky good. Pretty freaky deaky. We just drank one. It was lovely. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm drinking a rat meow. hey -o. Whether or not you are a fan of the Melty Mertzen 
or the smooth best beer. There's something on that list, we think, for everybody. Also, like, you can throw in your Hellas. You can throw in your Dunkles. Please do. Your list, yeah. my list, whose list, theirs list. It's a list. This is our list. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you uh, take it into consideration. Maybe go check it out. Maybe go try and find it out. And uh, we recommend that you do. You've got three weeks to get it done. But let's be honest, you've got till January. So make it happen. Um. <laughs> Okay, well, That's it. you know, guys, thank you so much for joining into our Oktoberfest 2024 special, our special sode. Oktoberfest truly is a celebration of what we believe to be the most wonderful time of the year, especially for you craft beer, beer enthusiasts, connoisseurs, ha, for most of us anyway. Hey, well. Uh, so we appreciate your support as always, and we can't wait to hear from you. And if you like what you saw and you love learning more about beer and hearing our opinions, whether they matter or not, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, hit that subscribe button and stay up to date on the latest videos. I mean, we're going to be here. We love that you're here. We've hit uh, quite a following over the last year. Oh, we my. do appreciate you. Thank you so much. We're it's so excited chronic. to bring you these super special specials and uh there's gonna be more coming up because guess what gabf's right around the corner oh yeah we are gonna do a super special special da, gabf da, special da, 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 but da, until then da, you get october first